Okay, então, eu sou o Matias, falta o nosso conselho, e o Raios, no Code 5, o ministro, e vai se doar. Thank you for this introduction. So, hello everyone, I'm Mathis Cordier, PhD student in the University of Angers, in collaboration with uh, Filmorano Mikado Company and Lima Grand Group. Welcome all to my uh, PhD defense about my contributions to high throughput plant phenotyping based on affordable RGB depth devices via computer vision. So first, let me introduce what is plant phenotyping. Plant phenotyping is the evaluation of phenotype attributes which corresponds to the visible expression of the genotype for the plant growing environment. And plant phenotyping is used in plant studies to evaluate varieties, and in particular, to ensure uh, experimental validity, we need to involve a large number of plants in such studies. And we want these plant studies to be high throughput, and uh, to uh, achieve uh, this uh, high throughput, we have to parallelize plant phenotyping and plant population with the final aim of uh, speeding up plant studies. So the first way to speed up plant studies is to optimize space. And in this context, we have to increase the plant density. And this is what it is already done with uh, manual plant phenotyping, where the visual expression of plants is made by an expert. And the second way of uh, optimizing, uh, of uh, speeding up plant studies is to optimize time. And in this case, we want to go to digital plant phenotyping. With digital plant phenotyping, we are able to automatically evaluate plants uh, by an imaging system. So we know several types of uh, digital plant phenotyping techniques. The first way is the sensor moving to the plant. The second way is the plant moving to the sensor. And the last solution is using a grid of sensor to monitor uh, plant studies. With this la last, um, with this last approach, we have several advantages because it enables um, plant studies to be high throughput, affordable if we use local sensor, and it is non-invasive and we have synchronization between plants uh, during plant phenotyping. However, this solution comes also with some drawbacks, with the inability to move around plants and to move them, and in the context of high density of plants, it creates occlusions, and understanding scenes in this case is currently a major limitation in computer vision. So we have to face the global problem problematic of how to perform digital plant phenotyping with a high density of plants and half of the devices via computer vision techniques. So once we talked about uh, digital plant phenotyping techniques, we are also to select some imaging modalities. And we can split uh, the imaging modalities into two main families with functional imaging uh, to evaluate um, physiological aspects and structural imaging to evaluate anatomical aspects. In this PhD, we focus on structural imaging uh, with uh, reflectance imaging and depth imaging. In particular, we explore the benefits of RGB depth information for digital plant phenotyping. And with this modality, depth imaging modality, we have the first pioneer work in 2012, which demonstrated the ability of depth modality to capture contrast between leaves in isolated plants with affordable depth sensor in front of you. Here we can see that if we have a side, this side view of a plant, we have leaves distributed quite uniformly along the main stem. And if we have affordable depth sensor from the view, we have quite a poor color contrast and we are not able to distinguish the, the different leaves. But if we go to a depth uh, imaging modality, we are able to retrieve some contrast between the leaves. And we want, our objective is to extend uh, this, uh, this first study to the study of a large number of plants. And that's why we designed uh, an imaging system um, uh, to, to monitor plant studies on RGB depth modalities. And we were helped also by the improvement in, uh, in RGB depth sensors, starting from Microsoft Kinect in 2012 to um, Intel Wilson's D435 uh, for now. So we have an example of, uh, of camera case that we can uh, share with you. And with this imaging system, we are able to get an um, affordable uh, acquisition system with less than 500 square meter, uh, uh, dollars per square meter at, uh, with the condition of deployment. And this system is also very high throughput because we are able to acquire high density of plants from each camera. And we are also robust to plant environments. As you can see here, we have put all the electronic components in a waterproof case. 
And in, the, in this context, we are able to uh, deploy such system in very challenging environments in terms of uh, hygrometry. And it is also able to resist to disinfectant sprays. Lastly, we also have, with such imaging systems, the ability to monitor plant studies over time, which is a very valuable aspect uh, of, uh, of plant phenotyping. This imaging system has been deployed largely in, uh, in four facilities in France, and it, enabled, it um, uh, permitted the creation of an unprecedented data set of RGB depth time series of plant growth, constitute, constitute of uh, more than uh, 20,000 plants, of species of interest for the company with pepper and brassica oleacea, and with a wide variability of growing environments, locations, and seasons. So I propose now that we can have a look to such time series. So as we can see here, we have a lot of uh, challenges uh, in plant phenotyping, and uh, these uh, time series are very challenging because we have a lot of occlusions between the plants and between the leaves. And we also have a very important cell similarity among the plants and among the leaves. And moreover, we also have quite low resolution images with, uh, with the affordable devices that we use. And here we face, uh, what we would like here is to be able to individualize plant and leaves in these scenes. But we face different bottlenecks in individual plant segmentation and individual leaf segmentation in the state of the art. So the first approach here is to consider that all the plants here are grouped in a plant batch, and all the plants here share a unified information. And in particular, this is guaranteed by experimental protocol. We have a temporal synchronization between plants within plant batches. And here, we have an approach considering that we can have an optical averaging rather than an average of measurements obtained at plant or leaf scale. So in this first section, we will uh, ask the question of how to parallelize plant phenotyping directly at batch scale. Then, what we can see also is that we have a lot of plant and leaf oscillations a long time. And these natural movements offer multiple views of the time, and it can also physically isolate plants. So here we will ask the question of how to select the relevant views for plant individualization. In this case, with this approach, the idea is to bypass the bottleneck of individual, individual plant segmentation with occlusions by selecting the relevant views for plant individualization. Lastly, a last approach will be to tackle the direct, the difficult problem of uh, individual leaf segmentation, because in this case, we need a large number of annotations to develop a supervised model uh, for leaf segmentation. And we want to explore the recent introduction of foundation models, which are trained on uh, billions of images with a wide application scope. And we ask the question here of how to adapt foundation models to RGB depth time series leaf, uh, for leaf individualization. So in this presentation, we will first, first discuss about uh, phenotyping at batch scale, and we will then go to finer scales with plant scale and leaf scale. So first, at batch scale, we can see here that uh, we have several batches for uh, each camera. And uh, if we perform the individualization of these batches manually during the PhD, we assume that it is achievable with the current state of the art and we focused more on the variety evaluation directly at batch scale. So we have a first work in 2019 uh, from Salma Samier, which demonstrated that at batch scale, average depth information over time is able to reveal plant stress. This also demonstrated that the optical averaging at batch scale is able to reinforce the information carried by each plant. And in particular, this method was based on frequency signal analysis including growth trend and circadian cycles. So if we see here on the, the figure on the right, we have the distance uh, from, of, of the plant to the cameras uh, over time. And we can see that we have different components in such signals. We have like a low frequency pattern, which corresponds to the global uh, growth trend of plants. And we have oscillations, which correspond to the oscillations of the leaves that we saw previously. And they are called circadian cycles because they are synchronized with uh, day night cycles. And, uh, sorry. and here we are, we are in the context uh, during the PhD of a study of uh, variety resistance to pathogen by evaluating plant's response after pathogen inoculation. In particular, we focused on variety evaluation based on the hypersensitive reaction involving cotyledon loss in resistant plants. So 
let me uh, introduce the experimental protocol. So here we have the different growth stages of young plants. So we have cotyledons, which are leaves coming from the seeds and fed by the seed. And uh, we have then the appearance of the first true leaves uh, uh, coming from the plant itself and fed by the plant itself. And here, in this experimental protocol, we have the inoculation of, of uh, the cotyledons with the, the pathogen studied. And then after a test period, we want to evaluate the reaction of plants. If the plant is susceptible, the cotyledons remain uh, on the plant. And if the plant is resistant, we have the hypersensitive reaction. And in this case, the plant will kill the cotyledons to be able to limit the spread of the pathogen to the rest of the plant. So to be able to target this reaction, we constructed an annotated dataset composed of type series with the paper TSW virus pathosystem. And it is composed of uh, 20 uh, uh, of 200 batches of resistant plants and 58 batches of susceptible plants. And for each batch, we have 20, inside, inside each batch, we have uh, 20 plants. So we have quite low resolution images compared to the number of, uh, of plants that we have in the batches. So if we're able to see visually the cotyledon loss in RGB time series, it is a very difficult problem in computer vision to be able to track it and count it. So we focused more here on depth time series. In particular, we observe here that uh, on the right, we have a photosceptible batch uh, from three days, from three to five days post inoculation. On the right, we have uh, like a normal growth of, uh, of plants. And on the left, we can see that we have like a special decrease of the time. And this is due to cotyledon loss. And what we want here is to be able to uh, validate our observations, starting from depth time series to one-dimensional signal of surface using depth map thresholding and several pixels. And what we are able to get here is uh, uh, adding the surface uh, of the time uh, for the, the day's post inoculation. And we can see on the right that we have a clear spatial drop for resistant batches, which is due to cotyledon loss. So now what we want is to be able to quantify it. So first, uh, we can say here that um, we don't have discriminating uh, discrimination with circadian cycles. So we want to focus on this spatial drop. And then we can say also that uh, if this spatial drop is uh, very clearly visible, it is because of the synchronization between, uh, between, the plant batch, between the plants within the batches. And it is due to identical growth conditions, stone time and inoculation time. So to quantify this drop, um, we want to extract the trend components by removing the seasonality due to circadian cycles. And then we developed the method to be able to uh, automatically extract spatial, spatial and temporal features to quantify the spatial drop. Applying it to all, um, all the batches in the data set, we are able to extract the feature distributions. And we can see here that we have clear differences between the distributions of susceptible and resistant batches. And we did the same approach for height and volume. And we built, we built at the end a uh, feature space. And uh, we can see here that we have um, significant features according to the Kolmogorov Smirnov test. But we can't use um, a, a unique feature in this feature space and just specialty because we have overlaps between all the distributions. That's why we went to um, some lightweight classification models. And we trained, uh, in particular, a random forest with uh, cross-validation. And we also applied some uh, class weighting based on class rep representativeness. And we, are, we were able to achieve an accuracy of 97% uh, of uh, classification of the batches. So to conclude on this part, we were able to, um, to um, build an end-to-end -end pipeline starting from depth time series to be able to, at the end, have a classification model of resistant and susceptible batches. This process is very high throughput in terms of, of time because uh, we are able to process at the edge 30 times faster than uh, what is done with manual evaluation by uh, uh, human experts. And it is also very high throughput in terms of space uh, because we, are, um, we have uh, about 18 batches per image, which corresponds to about uh, 360 plants per image. And with this high throughput in terms of, of space, the imaging system is very affordable because it corresponds to about 1.4 dollars per plant location. Finally, with such an approach, we are also able to maintain the ex existing experimental protocols, which is very valuable for pathologists. 
and we're able to provide an acceleration of the evaluation while we are able to preserve the accuracy of uh, such evaluation. <laughs> so, as we said previously, sometimes we are also to go at the finer and finer scales like plant of or plant on leaf scale. And plant scale is very important because plant, kin plant growth kinetics are of particular interest for biologists. And in, in this section, we will ask the question of how to extract time series of individual plants from time, time series of overlapping plants. And in our context, we have limited spatial resolution uh, because we have quite low, low resolution images with the affordable devices that we used. But we can easily access to the high sample information by using a high sampling rate uh, for acquisitions and benefits from the circadian cycles in moving, in, involving the plant movement. And then we will ask the more precise question of how to define sampling strategies to select the moments, uh, some moments without overlaps in the time series. So here we worked on the Brassica Oliracea dataset. And uh, in particular, we, we worked uh, at the level of vegetation segmentation mask level to focus on physical separation from top view. So let's now present uh, the, dif the different sampling strategies that we proposed. So we, we can um, represent the time series in 2D with days in rows and time of days in uh, columns. <clears throat> and each frame here corresponds to a moment in the time series. So for each moment, we can have overlapping between plants, which is uh, the frames in gray, and we can have no overlapping between two plants, which is framed in a <laughs> And the first approach, which is called the base, we call it the baseline, is the classical iterative approach to process successive frames until we have the first one. And we, we try to uh, extend this first approach by proposing a non-periodic non sampling approach. And in this case, it is the same uh, process, iterative process. And we add the classification of overlapped and non-overlapped frames to be able to uh, detect when we go back to a situation where we don't have overlap between plants and to select this moment in the, in the final sampling. This approach can be, can be also uh, done at, uh, uh, with uh, a periodic uh, sampling. And in this case, we have a seasonality-based down sampling. And uh, we also have the same process of classification to be able to detect when we go back to a situation where we don't have overlap. And finally, we propose also a combination of non-periodic and periodic sampling. So with the non-periodic sampling, we are able to extract daily sequences. And from those daily sequences, we can apply uh, the periodic sampling to, to, to this uh, series, <laughs> those series. And we use, in particular, this periodic sampling to detect and correct if we are errors in the classification errors in the, in the, in the sampling strategy. It is represented here in red, and we are able to correct if we have some issues. So these sampling strategies can be performed at different levels. So first, quite naive level is at the level of the frame, because here we want to select the times without overlap for all the plants in the frames. But we can apply these sampling strategies at the level of objects. Um, and in this case, we want to select the times without, without overlap locally for each plant. What we consider here as objects is the connected components that we can see in the scenes. So let's now go to the object sampling pipeline. So first, uh, so we propose an, an approach by uh, tracking the objects in the scene. And the first thing to do here is to be able to uh, initialize the tracking. So to, to, to achieve, achieve this, uh, we used the emergence point the detection so it, the emergence point is the, the location where the, the plants um, emerge from the soil. And we assume here that it's the, the unique location in 3D um, where the plant will not move a long time. And uh, we use this, this emergence point to uh, define a research area. And from this research area, we uh, are able to uh, define the tracking, object tracking method. And then we were able to uh, detect overlap in the, in, the, in the tracked object to, at the end, achieve an object on the sampling. So let's focus on the step of object tracking. So the goal here is to individualize the connected components, uh, including the plant of interest over time. And we can distinguish three cases, three main cases. In the first case on the left, we can see that we have a unique object in, uh, in the research area. So in this case, it is quite a trivial case because uh, we just add this connected component to the tracking. In the second case here, 
we have several objects in the research area. And in this case, we will use the location of, uh, of the plant tracks at the, at the pre on the previous frames to be able to select the connected components that we will that uh, will be added to the tracking. And in the last case here, it is quite similar to the first case because we only have one connected component in the in the research area. But in this case, we have overlapping between two plants, and the connected component includes two different plants. So we need to be able to detect when we have such overlap. So that's why we uh, we um, proposed an uh, overlapping detection method to be able to detect when we have an abrupt change in uh, 2D space. So here we monitored uh, surface and diameter over time, both absolute and re relative uh, features. And we were able to detect when we have abrupt changes in, uh, in the time series of, uh, of a lab, uh, of a tracked object. So at the end, we can, uh, we can uh, apply this process uh, over time on, on time series. We can see at the beginning that we have, uh, we have um, very a lot of trivial cases because the growth stage is quite low. But after a certain uh, time, we have, uh, due to the plant growth and oscillations, we have a lot of overlap. And we can see here at day 11 that we are able to select uh, uh, use a unique frame of the day uh, where the plant is non overlapped. So this method provider is able to detect even short non overlapping moments. So if we go to some key results, uh, we can see here that with the combination of non-periodic and periodic object sampling performs well. And in particular, we were able to extend the monitoring time from three to 10 days in average. So to conclude on this part, we proposed an innovative approach based on uh, sampling high throughput time series. And with this approach, we are able to combine uh, these techniques with image processing techniques uh, by managing the bodies to manage the slight of a lapse to go further in the in, in the monitoring time. And in particular, what we did is uh, was uh, using only RGB images, but we have a lot of perspectives with uh, depth imaging. Because as we can see here, um, if we have uh, overlap uh, between two plants, the contrast is very poor uh, if, we go, if we use the color imaging uh, modality. But if we go to depth imaging modality, we are able to have a very enhanced contrast between the two plants. And in particular, to conclude on this uh, section, we can see here that if we have an overlap between two plants, it corresponds in, in reality with slight overlap. It corresponds in reality to uh, an overlap between two leaves belonging to two different plants. And in this case, we assume that the leaf scale is more relevant to manage those slight overlaps. So let's now move to the leaf scale. So here we want to be able to individualize the leaves in the scenes. And the best performing supervised instance segmentation and tracking methods need a large number of annotated images. But such data set is very rare with RGB depth time series. And if we want to build it by ourselves, it is very costly and time consuming. That's why we need some unsupervised method or, or we tried to explore here uh, the interest of the new uh, recently uh, introduced foundation models. So these models are very uh, interesting here because they are trying once only on large scale and di diverse database. And we are able to uh, adapt it to specific instances using uh, prompts or fine tuning. But it also promotes the zero shot generalization, which means that you can apply such a, such a model to data never seen during the training. And that's why we want to explore it to, uh, to individualize leaves. In particular, we focused on uh, the, the recent team model from, from Meta AI introduced in uh, 2023, which is segment anything model. And this model, the goal of this model is to, um, to um, segment everything that is considered as object in the scene. And this uh, model is, uh, is trained on uh, color images. And we ask here the question of our depth imaging modality and time dimension able to enhance this segmentation with some. So in this part, we used three data sets, Brassica Olera data set that we, see pre that we saw previously, Komatsuna data set, which is an open data set of uh, LGB depth time series, and a paper data set that we uh, acquired uh, during the PhD. And this uh, combination of data set is very helpful because uh, useful because uh, we have different type scales with uh, different sampling rate and different duration of uh, each time series. 
So first, let's focus on the addition of depth modality. So here we started from the original segment anything model pipeline. And due to uh, the use of such model, we have some input shape limitation. So the limitation is not on the level of width and height of, uh, of the images because they are automatically managed with uh, input resizing as a preprocessing of uh, included in segment anything. But the, the limitation in shape is due to the fact that image encoder is trained only on RGB images. And that implies that we need a free channel input as a, as an input of a segment anything model. So that's why we propose different fusion strategies uh, of RGB and depth modalities. The first way of uh, fusing information here was the early fusion. So in this case, we use the height maps uh, as a multiplicative filters of uh, color imaging. So uh, uh, multiplicative filters of uh, red, green, and blue channels of uh, color images. And um, and we, we expect here that uh, the, co the contrast in depth uh, uh, is able uh, to uh, enhance the contrasting color. A second approach here is the intermediate fusion. And here we uh, encode uh, in parallel RGB and depth information. And with that, we are able to uh, extract uh, RGB and, height and depth embedding or height embedding. And we're able to fuse it in the middle of segment anything model to be able then to uh, use the, the original mass decoder of segment anything model. And the last approach here is the late fusion. And here we use uh, the original sum to uh, RGB images. And we use the height maps to be able to select the instances, the, to filter the, the instances produced by sum and get only the, the instances which, which have sufficient height. So let's now move to some results. So regarding the instance segmentation uh, metrics uh, with uh, average precision, we can see here that we have a systematic gain of adding depth modality with intermediate and late fusion. And in particular, as we have time series here, it is very interesting to, uh, to uh, observe those results uh, over time, because we can see here that we have a very, uh, the growth stage is very important because at the beginning, we have very poor segmentation, but so when we reach a sufficient canopy surface and sufficient canopy height, we reach like a plateau um, when the depth controls are sufficient. And we can see here that with depth injection, the conversion to this plateau is, uh, is clearly faster. So here we have some visualization. So starting from the baseline with the segment anything model uh, generator on, on the left, so on RGB images, when we apply the late fusion, we are able to select only um, objects corresponding to instances corresponding to the plants. And we have at the at the semantic level, we have something which is really close to the ground truth. But we can see that we have uh, like leaf cuts and the aggregation of uh, of leaves inside instances. So we assume here that we we have uh, in in this part we have shows like uh, arbitrarily arbitrarily some uh, some parameters like the weighted mean in inter intermediate fusion and the weights themselves. But we can tune these parameters to obtain better results. And uh, we can also see the sum model itself as a, as a parameter of the model because we can uh, we have now new uh, models uh, variation of uh, segment anything like sum HQ, which is the high quality segment anything model, and it promotes um, uh, it promotes an enhanced instant segmentation. So we can expect here an enhanced leaf segmentation. And also we can expect better results by adding some fine tuning, but special prompts or text prompts. And finally, we can say also that uh, with intermediate fusion, we used um, we used encoder trade on color images on uh, depth images, so we can expect better results uh, by having a specifically uh, trained encoder on, on depth data. So let's now move to the addition of uh, time dimension. So in this case, we started from the pipeline track anything, which was also released in 2023, and in this case, segment anything is used. To produce um, to produce instances, and then we have a multi-object tracking to be able to match the instances produced by segment anything at T plus one with the instances tracked at time t. The issue with this approach is that in in our uh, datasets we have appearance of new leaves during the tracking, and we have to take into account uh, those new leaves uh, during the tracking. And we ask the question here of how to add new leaves during the tracking. So we proposed 
two extension of, uh, of uh, this method. The first one is to be able to detect new objects outside the track instances. So here we assume that when we produce the instances with uh, the segment anything model, um, we will first have the matching with the instances already tracked, but we can use the, the instances that was not matched with uh, the previous frame and add like shape and height filtering to detect what is corresponding, what is suitable to correspond to, to list and add it to the tracking over time. Another approach is to consider that, uh, to, is to detect objects inside the tracked instances. And here we consider that we can have aggregation of leaves. Um, uh, and it is due to the fact that when we have the appearance of a new leaf, a new leaf is very small, and it is in the vicinity of a big leaf, which is already tracked. And in this case, we can have aggregation uh, within instances. And we use 2D spatial uh, processes to be able to uh, separate instances if we detect that we have several uh, leaves inside. So we add, finally in the method, so to evaluate the, the, the method and the, the propagation quality of the method, we initialize the tracking with the ground truth at T0 and we want to evaluate the propagation. So here we can see that adding time dimension, we have a systematic gain um, in, uh, in uh, instance segmentation. In particular, with the method uh, detecting new objects inside the track instances, we have the better results here. And we can see here also, so the data sets are sorted by uh, sampling rate, and we can see that the higher the sampling rate, the better the performance. Once again, we have to put this into perspective with time. And we can see here that all the methods converge towards the plateau as soon as we have like sufficient growth stage. And we have a low degradation of this segmentation over time with, uh, with the method detecting object inside the track instances. So here we can go to some visualization. So we can see here that we have, uh, with uh, the first approach uh, of track anything, we have a lack of manage management method to, for the appearance of uh, new leaves. And we can see that at the end, we have a lot of leaf aggregation within instances, and we also have missing leaves. So with the first approach that we proposed uh, with uh, the method detecting new object outside the track instances, we have aggregation of leaves uh, within instances, and we also have some leaf scuds on several instances. And with the last approach, detecting object inside the track, track instances, we can see that we have an efficient individual leaf segmentation and tracking. And uh, this validates the hypothesis of aggregation of new leaves within uh, the instances already tracked. So let's discuss this result. So the first thing that we can say here is that with the method detecting the, the new object inside the track instances, we have like a time lag between the appearance of a new leaf and its addition to the tracking, because we need to, um, to have like a sufficient separation of the two leaves inside the inside instances. So this uh, explains why we have such a timeline. And uh, we can expect also from this method uh, to have uh, better results uh, added by adding fine-tuning spatial forms or text forms. And finally, we can say also that with uh, some in high quality, we can uh, significantly improve, uh, we expect that we can significantly improve uh, leaf segmentation. And in this case, we, we will be able to limit leaf aggregation in instances and at the end, uh, be able to strengthen the method detecting new objects outside the track instances, which is theoretically um, uh, the more logical. So finally, we can say also that uh, this summer, uh, Meta AI released a uh, second version of segment anything model. And this comes with uh, the ability to segment instances directly on videos and type sets. So here, they, they, they promote better results uh, than the static sum model uh, combined with a temporal model. So that's the approach that we did. But we can expect that LTP diffusion strategies that we proposed can also be performed with uh, this model and it, it, will very, it, it will be very promising. <clears throat> So to conclude on spot, we proposed an adaptation of uh, the recent foundation models to LGBTF time series. We can say here that the instant segmentation performance are lower than the supervised method in the state of the art, but we have already very promising results without any addition, without fine tuning and without prompts. And finally, 
we, we were able to demonstrate that uh, we have a systematic gain of adding depth modality and time dimension to counter objections between views. So let's now move to the global conclusion and perspectives of uh, this PhD. So first, we can summarize our contributions. So we, we developed a plant phenotyping system with LGB depth uh, modalities to be able to monitor plant studies. And we proposed a processing of uh, LGB depth time series at different scales. So the first scale is the batch scale. And in this case, we propose an evaluation of, uh, of the plant batches. Then we, we went to plant scale and we proposed a method to be able to individualize plants by uh, using some sampling strategies. And finally, we proposed a method at leaf scale to be able to um, uh, exploit the benefits of a recently foundation model for leaf individualization. We also have, had some additional publications that reinforce the work that I presented uh, in this presentation. And now we can switch to the discussion and perspectives of this PhD. So what we proposed in this work is uh, different contributions at each scale, batch, plant, and leaf scale. But we can expect that the combined multi-scale processing approach will be very useful uh, at the end to get uh, to, to be able to enhance accuracy of the assessments and also to be uh, generic on the plant studies that we can uh, monitor. Also, uh, we can uh, ex expect some optimization of the imaging system. In particular, we have a PhD which is uh, led uh, currently by Felix Mercier about towards a data-centric AI approach to plant phenotyping. And in this work, in his work, uh, he worked about on uh, adaptive sampling to be able to reduce uh, data storage, data transfer, and computation time by being able to select the suitable times uh, to acquire new images and uh, being able to reduce the number of images. We also um, worked on user adoption at the end uh, because the tools today, the new tools, are just evaluated on the performance criterion. But we can extend the criteria to other uh, over, um, over things like uh, social and enver environmental um, uh, criteria. And uh, at the end, the, the goal is, that is to provide a tool that it is acceptable and helpful for, for end users. Finally, we also have very uh, promising uh, industrial perspectives uh, with, uh, new equip uh, with new imaging modalities to equip uh, different facilities. And also, uh, we, have, we still have uh, acquisition of new images, and we will improve and develop new methods. And we propose also some, uh, at the technical level, user interface uh, so that the, the pathologist can directly monitor, launch, and stop acquisitions. And in parallel of this uh, industrial uh, perspectives and work, uh, I was also pleased to, uh, to uh, have the opportunity of a huge uh, teaching volume during the PhD, and also uh, tr some training courses with uh, international uh, workshops and webinars uh, during the PhD. So to conclude here, I want to thank uh, all the jury members for, um, for uh, taking time uh, to review and evaluate my PhD. And I also want to thank all the collaborators for their support and knowledge sharing. And I, I'm now pleased to answer your question and have some uh, scientific discussion.